You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, what's up, guys? I am your host, Danny Mussolini, and I just want to welcome you all to an awesome episode of Vigilantes Radio. So we have a, a very special guest uh, for tonight's show, so you guys want to stick around for that, of course. Uh, we must live with hope. Yet, guys, we cannot live by hope. It is fine to hope for the best. That, however, is not enough. We cannot merely hope. We must take some action. It is sad how many things are tolerated in the hope that we will improve. Hoping for the best won't do anything. Working and taking action with hope in your heart will bring about results. That's a powerful combination. Hope works in your favor only as long as it is accompanied by action and commitment. Guys, hope cannot replace action. Do what needs to be done. Hope or no hope. Hope for the best, of course, and do everything in your power to make it happen. Yes, there is a such thing called hope. Things will get better when you make them better. Start each day with hope and then get busy working. Let your hope inspire you rather than console you. Hope for the best and then do whatever it takes. Hope really, guys, depends on you. Take that from me, Denny Mussolini. That is my word and word is bond. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Yo, hello and welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Music or Inside the Book. Inside the business where we dive into the minds of the people who create marvelous things. It feels so good to be back with you guys once again. So one time, one time for my people who are indigos, crystalline, or star seeds, or for my vigilantes audience family. And two times for my people who are vegetarian or vegans. If you're like me, we are averaging over 37 thousand live listeners and we've been at this for four solid years i appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey and we are still evolving baby it is all because of you most definitely we are the people who have dedicated their lives to music spirituality business literature art movies and research in every aspect and we want to allow you an opportunity to tell your story man we've had celebrities on our show from grammy award winning artists to nominees, to actors, comedians, CEOs, technology geniuses, visual artists, from authors to professors and aliens. Or people who think they're aliens. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Come on our show and talk to me. So check it out. To book an interview, or just to share a real cool story, email me at vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. And that's V as in Victor. I'm passionate about what I do, just as passionate about what you do, and together. Yes, together, we can get your voice heard by the people who should hear it. So let's create something incredible. You know the number to dial. 701-801-9813. Text that number to your buddy right now and tell them to tune in to connect with us or our guests. Or you can hop in the mix directly from our website, onlyonemediagroup.com. Right from the homepage, you can slap that go live button and you'll be right here live in the mix and in the chat room with all of us feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they got here but only as time permits sometimes my guests and i talk entirely too much and we take up the entire hour and as always all episodes are available
available for free download and you can grab that from either spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes youtube or any app from the google play or itunes store or over at our website and that goes for every single episode that we ever aired well tonight's interview is the ko the beast interview and again i am your host Danny mussolini just in case you guys have forgotten so there are twenty nine thousand of you guys on the phone lines in our chat rooms on uh google hangouts and skype what is up what's happening what's tracking G- glad you guys are here right so we are the people who have dedicated their weekdays and nights to music, films, news, business ventures, conspiracies, books, and just talking every aspect. From our incredible writing and promotion here on our new Facebook page. By the way, if you're on Facebook right now, make sure you go over and like our page. Or our interview and music show, which is where you're at right now on Vision Ages Radio. Or the dive deep into relationships, uh, music business, spiritual living making money yeah on a show we got called skeptics we spend each and every day giving our maximum effort to create an exciting community for all creative minds that coexist in this beautiful artistic world tonight's special guest is the one and only ko the beast so with that man let's go ahead and invite him on hey ko you're now live in a mix with all of us how's it going yeah 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 what's up with you man you all right yes sir yes sir man how are you feeling bro Oh man, I'm I'm feeling good, man. I can't I can't really complain right now. Alright, alright. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into this, man. What are where or what are your views on Atlanta being like the right location for KO the Beast? Well, I know that um Atlanta is the hot spot now, it's the new spot. We all know that California got Hollywood and then is Atlanta, Georgia, which is Hollywood South. Mm-hmm. So it's like the new it. So everybody is coming to the A. You got people who's made name for themselves and who come to the A <clears throat> or already live living in the A. You got business people. And by me networking, I get a chance to run into these people who have platforms for underground artists coming up on the rise. And, you know, some of them will give you the opportunity to have a chance to do what you got to do, man. My views on Atlanta is, is nothing nothing but good vibes, man. Nice, nice. Have you ran into Body Famous out there? Man, uh, Gucci Mane, uh, Stewie Rock, and you got um, DJ Red Dread. He's a commissioner of Hot 107.9. And, you know, I'll be doing my thing at uh, Royal Peacock. Right. And he enjoyed it. Uh, well, at first, when I had ran into him, he wasn't really feeling me because I had came up to the radio station with a single and he wasn't really feeling it. But when I showed my face again and got a chance to get up on stage to do my thing, you know, he was feeling it. Yeah. So it's just, you know, fun networking, networking with a lot of the celebs. Yeah. So the DJ, he uh he saw you perform this song, you tried to handle him? Wait, well, well, actually it was it was a different song, yeah. Okay, 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 different song. Alright, alright. Yeah, sometimes they need to see their energy, man. Sometimes yep. their energy is what changed people's awesome. mind. Right, right. And sometimes you just, you know, catch somebody walking along the way and you just wanna say what's up. Yeah, right, right. That too. So does location really matter nowadays because I feel like everything is done on the internet which is virtually you know universal does location really matter when the internet is primarily like the marketplace for everything well a lot of people may not care about where your location is Mm -hmm. but it's more so representing your hometown I Mm -hmm. think that that's a must like I was born and raised in Flint, Michigan so I got 810 on my back Mm -hmm. and Atlanta, Georgia that's my second home so they you know they support me as long as I'm doing it the right way and going hard as I can and the internet is also a must because nowadays we're living in a digital society Mm -hmm. you know not, not everybody really 
watch TV like that, so it's mainly on their phones. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing, whatever type of passion you got, it's best to have that internet connection so that if somebody likes your material, you can tell them where to go, you know, and they, they can look right, right up on their phone. Right. I agree. Man, websites, man, you got them, we need them. Where do you want people to go online and find your music and, you know, connect with you? Okay, well, man, it's, it's a long list, man. I got everything on iTunes, Apple Music, YouTube. You can find my SoundCloud links on YouTube. I got Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, Deezer, iHeartRadio, Napster, Tidal. If you're listening to one of my songs but really don't know who I am and never heard the song before and you like how it sounds, you can Shazam it. You can go to Pandora and Spinrilla. Nice. Man, you should do voiceovers. You got a nice speaking voice, man. You were just reading <laughs> that list of uh, markets that you're at and it, was like, it almost sounded like a commercial. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I'm just trying to promote it the best way. Yes, sir. All right. So with the internet, like you said, we're in a digital age. Everybody's on the phone. People don't really sit down and watch TV. They can just watch it from the phones. Whether if you got like the Cody app or a Showbox or whatever. Um, what's your opinion on being like as transparent as possible nowadays as an artist opposed to how it used to be, you know, that you were the coolest if everything about you was a mystery or the less you spoke the more of a superstar you were yeah um like I I grew up on 90s music mm -hmm. starting off and to me 90s music is you know it's still the best it's still the shit oh, yeah. um when people people had the, the look they had the lyrics and they had the video I mean they had the um like the all around talent like everything was just there it was no problems it was no nobody was complaining about mumble rappers right. and and when it was time to do them interviews everything was just real and we we could adapt to that you know we could stay true to what they were doing and um they, they was like the forefathers, you know, the, I wouldn't say trendsetters, but they were the ones who made everything set to let you know, like, if you want to do it like this, this is how you got to do it. Right. But um, I just want to fast forward to the early 2000s where gangster music was, was like really popping, popping. You know, it got diagnosed. Um, like they was giving us that trap music, mm -hmm. but it they was able to give us other genres of music also. Like it wasn't just a hundred percent like always, all the time, every five minutes, trap, 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 trap. trap, trap. You know, and they was able to make you know have different subjects to talk about, and you know they was keeping it real, but. It just seems like nowadays the generation after mine, they just trying to be like what they see on TV, mm -hmm. and they're getting the messages wrong, and it's, it seems like everything is all mixed up, and more and more people are being exposed. I, I don't think that being fake will make you a better artist at all, <laughs> because yeah. the truth will come to light. Best believe it. Yeah, um, and it's it, it, it seems like now um, instead of the artist having lyrics, it's more so the look. They look a certain way versus mm -hmm. having a good song, which is yeah. nothing wrong with that. I mean, time changes. Yeah, I know how to adapt, but somebody like Ko the Beast, I know how to have all of it. The look. The, the the video and the lyrics lyric to me lyrics is a must yeah I have to agree there 
man and, and your background is pretty straightforward i could be wrong though and, and that's why you're here like to set me straight set the record straight so i imagine that like adapting to a new environment or a change of scenery might present new challenges of course but i'm sure it's also like rewarding to go through that and grow through that so take us back to your own history a bit like what's what was going through your mind at the time when you transitioned between michigan and mm -hmm. georgia like uh that's two different environments so like where, where were you in your mind well when i was growing up in michigan it was a time when my dad had moved to atlanta and i was able to see him during summer break so i already knew what the vibe was you know during the summertime every now and then so i had already got a little bit of taste of that you know just growing up in in the a1o and like all of my family members are there you know what i'm saying closest homies are there and it's almost like i, I ain't you know i ain't gonna lie man like sometimes i'll be getting like homesick hmm. but at you know when, like me being in the a i just gotta just tough it out and stick in there and do what I gotta do until I make it and then go back home and be like, hey, shit, we on. There, right. are, there are times when I do go back home and, you know, see my family during the holidays and try and go, you know, just see how they doing. I ain't just leave and be like, man, fuck y'all, man, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. No, it, was, it wasn't nothing like that. It's just that, you know, home is where the heart is. So I figure I can, you know, carry that to Georgia and just mix everything all in one yeah okay yeah. so who played like key roles along the way in making all this music thing seem possible and reachable like who told you to really pursue these dreams man really man like my my cousins and some close homies of mine they was listening to my music and they was like, man, yo, yo shit hard. Like, I don't think they were sugarcoating because they they would have told me, you know, they wouldn't lie to me. These, these are my, my blood cousins. These are my closest homies. So, and plus I'm featuring them on the tracks. They asking me how to, um, you know, like asking me to like, criticize their music. So we all on the same page, like everybody, all is all trying to make it but for the most part my cousins and closest homies are the ones who gave me the best words of advice you know what i should be doing in my music what i mm -hmm. shouldn't be mute shouldn't be doing in my music like hey this is what you can do differently and mm -hmm. i just i trust them and when i lay everything down everything just comes all perfect nice nice so a lot of time was spent on both of the music performance and production that came out sparkling in my opinion. So what put the magic into your song Rise? I'm a movie person. Ah. And how I became a movie person, my aunt, she was a movie person. And when different movies came out, she would always take me to the theater with her and we would just watch these dope movies and one of them still sticks in my head till today i don't know if you ever heard of the movie nightmare before christmas yeah yeah that's a night a lot that's to me until this day it's still a dope movie and when i listen to the melody man it's like the melodies are like dope it's ominous and it's cool and it's, it's like mixed all in one it's kind of like the struggle of the melodies and one day I was on a website scrolling through they page looking for beats and I found a beat made by uh, Blazing Beats and it was like and when I clicked on it I listened to it and it was like a dope Christmas beat so I, I was like man you know I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the hood on there I'm gonna mix everything up but I don't just wanna go in there and rap I can do that all day and just I want to make this an actual song like a hip-hop song with melody in it 
So I did some some research and practice, practice and practice, and got a hold to the melody thing, and I just wanted to add my own style on there, not so much copying everybody else, just you know, just add my own style on on there. It's like almost like the hood version of Nightmare Before Christmas, right. and that's how I came up. We're rise. I'm rising up from the hood and stand on the top. Yeah. Like when you're performing this song, does it come out the way that you envision your performance? Man, hell no. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> what do you envision then? Well, it, it's like I said, it's, it's a different type of song. It's not like your everyday type rap music if you want to call it or hip hop music um, when I performed the song I only had a week to get everything together mm-hmm. and uh, so when I got up on stage like during, during the time when I was practicing like it, everything didn't really come together like it should have I think that in order for it to um, become the way how I envisioned it I should have had a little bit more time you know, that's all I need is just a little bit more time. But when you're dealing with, you know, certain open mics, you only, your time is limited. So oh, it's yeah. best to utilize that the best way you can. Um, but like I, like I said, uh, if I had a little bit more time with Rise, I think that it would have came out perfect. Nice. All right. So was there anything you feel you have accomplished directly like at the end of your recording sessions for What's Hood 1.0 um, mm-hmm. compared to like your previous tapes and albums? Yeah, um, what I've accomplished, it wasn't so much what I've accomplished after each recording session, but it was what I've accomplished after I finished recording the whole project. Mm. It's like I'm starting something new, a new verbal trend or something because watch sooner or later you're going to hear it, everybody saying what's hood what's mm-hmm. hood with you man what's hood with you Domini you know yeah. <laughs> and he was like hold up did you say did you just say what's hood man K.O. said that he was, he was mm-hmm. the first dude to say that shit too yeah so and and then you have certain individuals who have um the trend of like fashion, like they might look a certain way mm-hmm. and then everybody else trying to latch on to this certain individual because of because of what they got on. You know what I'm saying? It may not be so much the fashion part on my end, but what I say. Like I said, I'm I'm more so a, a lyrical type individual, so what I say might cause everybody else to say the same thing. All and right. when they tell other people that they're going to come back they're going to do their research and be like wow KO was the first one to say what's good <laughs> <laughs> so it's on and popping yeah man you're going to have Young Thug Migos and uh, what's the other guy I forget the other guy from Atlanta uh, man it's the whole bunch of <laughs> yeah no, the perfect. Blue Eminem guy uh, what's his name oh 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 Blue Eminem dude his name is uh ah I just downloaded his mixtape. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't think his name for nothing. He's with Gucci. Well, he was with Gucci for some time. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Uh, but they they, they have a, a, a thing uh, how they like to claim they come up with certain slang. And, you know, you saying, what's hood? You're going to have young thugs tomorrow. Nah, I'm the king of it. <laughs> yeah, but oh, it, but man, it, it's, it's if really that was to happen, though. If, if that was to happen, though, how would you respond? Well, it wouldn't be so much, like, anger. Mm-hmm. But, like, some people tend to react with a beef song. Like, they so quick to do a beef song just for the views or the popularity. Uh-huh. In my case, with something like that, only something like being established verbally, I would... I would go over and talk to the man, like, hey, man, you know damn well I was the first dude to say it was hood. Yeah. So why are you trying to take mine 
you know, it's 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 like copyright infringement, like what happened in American Gangster uh, when um when Frank Frank Lucas had Blue Magic. You had Nicky Barnes trying to take his. Mm. That's when Frank Lucas went and talked to Nicky Barnes. Was like, hey man, you know I'm I'm the first one that started this man. This you know this is my shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't you know say so you gotta call it something else. And and, and Nicky Barnes was like, all right man, I'll call it the Blue Dog shit or something. You know. <laughs> But uh, like Young Doug, if he was able to, to rephrase it, he can do whatever you want with it. But I stand behind what's good, just like Frank Lucas stood behind Blue Magic. Nice. Pee Wee Longway, that's his name. P yeah, Pee Wee Longway. <laughs> Damn, I couldn't think of his name. Yeah, I couldn't think of it either. And I just doubt no, it. Actually, I, I think he like from, from St. Louis or something like that. Yeah, but he he been in, in Atlanta uh, for like the past few years. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Signed a Gucci like when he first started popping. Right. Oh, and um, like what I like about Atlanta is it seems like everybody, well, not everybody, but majority of the people is from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Not only yeah. the U.S., but different parts, just different parts of the world. Period. Like a lot of them are in Atlanta. I'm like, man, this yeah. is Hollywood South. Yeah, they call it a, a Mecca, and, and it's usually because people have traveled from other places and uh, just become part of the Atlanta culture. Right. Uh, I remember driving downtown Atlanta and just getting lost. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole other city. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have map, map quest, Google Maps, something. Yeah. No lies, no lies. Man, what's important in your opinion when hearing your own vocals come back to you for the first time after the mix and mastering has been completed? Well, when I go in the booth, I I call it a uh, pre-record. Like I want the engineer to get a vibe of where I'm coming from, and I want the engineer to understand how the song is going to go. So I go in there. I say, man, I'm going to just go in there and spit it. And I just want you to know how everything goes. So I would just spit everything from beginning to end. Then we record one good time. Like, because like, cause I rehearse everything before I even go to the studio. I, I hate going to the studio and still being brainstorming mode. Nah. Right, I want right. to go to the studio and hit the ground running. You know what I'm saying? I don't spend money on hours. I don't have no time to be trying to freestyle and <laughs> trying to put words together and how I'm spitting everything. So, yeah. I go in, do it one time without recording, and then do it the second time realistically one good time. And then we uh, mix and master everything. But if the engineer or whoever I went to the studio with got anything to, you know, put in, like, hey, man, instead of saying this, maybe you should say that. Instead of saying it in this way, say it that way. Then I'll be like, okay, okay. Right. But um, everything must be perfect. Then when I hear it, I'll be like, I'll be like, man. I say, yeah, that's hard. That's hard. I like it. I like it a lot. And then that's when the mixing and mastering takes place. I, I wouldn't want to do a song, then get a mix and master, hear it again, and be like, man, I can't believe I just said it like that. I need to go back and re-record it like, nah, nah. How many times did it take for you to listen to it to decide, like, all right, this is the final product? I would say about two or three times. That's it. A song, for the most part, is like three, four minutes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nine minutes is really nothing. So I, you know, hear it a few times and be like, okay, yep, that's that's it. Let's go ahead and uh, make some math. Yes, sir. 
right, K.O., man, I sincerely want to thank you for uh, doing this interview with us. Everything I've seen, read, and heard shows you truly embody the inspiration and freedom of speech and sharing your life on wax and combined with your courageous ways of going after one of the biggest and grimiest markets. You've got a strong future ahead of you, brother, I'm sure. So, again, thank you, and it's truly been an honor and a privilege. So here's yeah. our longstanding tradition on the Vision Nineties radio. Uh, it's called the soapbox where you can say anything at all that we didn't get a chance to chat about. Some people might be thinking, what's my approach to all this? And it's really been the same way ever since I wrote my first verse and since I was a kid and my approach is pure dominance. Mm. You know, I wrote my first verse as if I'm already in the game. Mm. Yeah. It yeah. took some time to, you know, develop to the stage where I am right now, but I take this very serious. So when I want people, when people hear me, I just want for them to be like, man, he, yeah, he's serious about this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, this is what I live for. I eat, breathe hip hop mm-hmm. all day can't go wrong with it yes, so just in case some people was wondering how come he's so aggressive I'm mean, just I'm just being dominant <laughs> yes sir got to live up to your name too the beast oh quite yeah a name. that's quite a name uh huh I mean it's, it's in my blood so you know how they say uh yeah he he, he goes hard but if he don't like you like Somebody don't like me. They put a diss record out on me. It's it's a rap. <laughs> mm. You bringing it like that, huh? Yeah, we we don't take diss records lightly. <laughs> Have you been in like a diss battle? Um, a long time ago, man, and like in high school, and when I moved to Atlanta, says so this, but I, I got got a few times. You know, during my early stages, I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. But uh, when I then when I moved to the A, it was some people, you know, what I'm saying who was who was trying to fuck with the beast, mm. but they they couldn't do it. I had to shut them down. All right. <laughs> Got right, my guys. cousins came in was like, I told you, I told you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. All right, guys. After the music break, it'll be time for our usual tradition. It is called the hot seat, and our fans love this part of the segment. And, of course, along the actual interview, but the audience will get to hear K.O. of the Beast provide us with some vocals. Maybe he can sing uh, poetry, inspirational speech, written word, freestyle rap, joke story, or maybe even whip out a live instrument. The choice will be K.O. the Beast, uh, whatever he want to do for us live on the spot. Uh, but... You know, we come back, we'll find out if he have true artistry and maybe even some hidden talents. But for right now, we have K.O. the Beast with his song Rise, and we'll be right back. Don't hear a half turn up, come to the block 
creative record from ko the beast it was called rise make sure you check it out uh we have all his links in the uh description of this episode so all you have to do is click on the links guys i just want you to know you are full of possibilities no matter what your age your education your physical condition or your financial situation your life is still filled with possibilities the frustration you feel comes when these possibilities are not being realized you're here to make a difference in your own special way no one else can bring your own unique perspectives to the world you can make a difference and it will bring fulfillment to your life. All the great human creations and achievements have been accomplished by people who are just like you, by people who people, uh, by people who people, I did say that, who choose to fill their possibilities. Everyone is special. Everyone has within them the potential for greatness. Choose to live your possibilities. Choose to make a difference and no obstacle can hold you back. Now, sitting in church. Church. Actually, I wasn't sitting. I was standing because I was ushering that Sunday. Um, but my pastor said that it is not up to us to uh, like find our purpose. I mean, to make make our purpose. Like, say we're like trying to come up with something from scratch. Purpose. We were made to discover our divine purpose. So, yeah, you know, yeah, of course, you're going to explore around and see what works for you. Maybe music is your thing. Maybe basketball is your thing. Maybe just uh, thinking of like some marketing ideas is your thing. However long as it takes, you know, you to find it. You just got to live out your purpose. And that's what I'm talking about. Possibilities are all around us. So with that, let's bring on the man of the hour, K.O. the Beast. You're back live with us and in our hot seat. What do you have for us? You simple bait. It's too late. Find out your destination's fake. Now you fuck. Take it in the ass like preparation H. She swallow niggas holy moly with her tongue. That's my Yoshi being soft. Played out. I'm hardcore. Call me Mick Foley. Can't get past me to her goalie. Pull up like roly poly. Last week, I smelled pussy and made tuna out of Tony. Don't even have to hurry. Hood made a beast. I got a fist. Find his wife and out the south. I'm coming like it's pilot. So sick of behind scenes. Shit in your spleen. Pissing your liver. Caterpillars in your dinner. 
to hit Jamaican stomach quiver. Never am I a quitter, deliver atomic bombs. Dropping on Uncle Tom with boss cutters like I'm his I'm smoking green like asparagus. Mean, I'm so arrogant. Pass the pussy down to the team like it's inherited. Grinding paper thick. Watch my cream turn into mayo. Little boy, your cash is clay. That's one reason I don't play, though. What's up? Nice, 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 nice. KO the Beast, everybody. Let them know where they can connect with you online again. My uh, online, you can hit me up on Twitter at K underscore O underscore the Beast, D A B E A S T, on Instagram at 1KO the Beast, and Snapchat K dot O D A B E A S T. All right, you heard him. All right, man, we definitely appreciate you uh, for stopping by and uh, chatting up with us. Like I said, those links will be in the description of this episode, so all people have to do is click those links. Appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab that from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, any app that's on a Google Play or iTunes store or our website. And that goes from every single episode that we've ever aired. If you'd like to request music or a particular guest or send something for me to play, email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. If it's music, please label it by artist and title. Here's my disclaimer. We are genre free. We do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay, but facts alone. And actually, you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show. So deal with it. Nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, as well as Spricker. We always follow back. That is the number one rule. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself and be absolutely great at just doing that. Avoid being too comfortable because you're messing with your potential when you do that. Peace and have a good night. And now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive.